Good evening Philippines, this is Mike Pado once again and we are back to our analysis for this Monday through Wednesday, September 27th to 29, 2021 and this is brought to you by Typhoon 2000. Let's begin with our update, here is the latest graph set beginning today, on Monday until tomorrow, Tuesday, we have uh, uh, Typhoon Mindule which is now moving very slowly across the uh, Northwest Pacific Ocean, just to the east of the North Philippine Sea. And uh, right now it's uh, uh, moving at a speed of 4 to 5 kph. And it's encountering some uh, cold uh, pool because of its uh, slow movement. The uh, temperature uh, above the uh, surface, the temperature of the sea surface, below the uh, storm is beginning to become uh, cooler which uh, creates some upwelling meaning that the uh, sea surface temperature cooler sea surface temperature will rise up from beneath of the ocean up to the surface so in return it will create some uh, some weakening of the uh, system because right now based on the data from the joint typhoon warning center the uh, sea surface temperature is 24 degrees Celsius beneath the uh, tropical uh, cyclone or beneath I Mindole. Mean, That's the reason why why uh, the system, even though it's undergoing some eye wall replacement cycle, the new eye wall is having a hard time to uh, organize because of cooler sea surface temperature. Uh, it's simply because the storm is not moving or barely moving and uh, since there's no sunlight the replenishment of warm uh, ocean uh, sea surface temperature is uh, not uh, is not uh, is not occurring below the storm so once the system uh, moves towards the north it will start to uh, move again into warmer sea surface temperature if it does accelerates towards the north or north northwest and uh, a possible reintensification of the system is likely within the next uh, three to five days. So uh, after that, it will again weaken as it moves into uh, cooler sea surface temperature to the south of uh, Japan. So uh, that's the uh, the uh, situation of uh, Typhoon Mindule from Super Typhoon. It rapidly weakened into just a Category 2 from Category 5. It's just a Category 2. Typhoon with winds of 175 kph and then it will still weaken further to 165 based on the uh, situation right now uh, beneath the uh, uh, typhoon. So Mindule is uh, embedded with a long monsoon trough all the way from uh, Palawan across Visayas, Bicol region, Central Luzon, Metro Manila, Mm, Calabar zone, so the northern parts of Zulu archipelago, so it's creating some uh, isolated wind showers and thunderstorms over these areas, while over the areas of uh, the coastal areas of the Cagayan Valley, including Batanes, between Kubub Islands, and Ilocos Norte, there will be some light northeasterly surface wind flow, you know, bringing some fresher breeze over these areas with some possible isolated rain showers in the in the afternoon or evening as well okay and to the east of Mindole we have another LPA that developed for the past 24 hours this is LPA 91W but it has a lesser chances of developing into a tropical cyclone within the next 24 hours that's why it's just low uh, chances or less than 35 percent that it will intensify into a tropical cyclone so we have light southwesterly winds over Palau and the uh, central Philippine Sea. It's not yet a, uh, a southwest monsoon. So actually the southwest monsoon is beginning to, uh, uh, is no longer here. Uh, just uh, strong northeast, uh, so just northeasterly winds here and some light southwesterly winds over these areas. That's why we didn't uh, mention it here in our graph set. And we have here the intertropical convergence zone outside of PAR. And uh, if we take a look now at the uh, latest uh, fast animation, this is from the University of Wisconsin CIMSS tropical cyclone page. 
there you go as you can see the eye the inner eye wall of the system has uh, disappeared and there's a new one forming and as you can see the uh, former small eye has uh, dissipated and it's now forming a new larger eye that's a sign that the system is undergoing a uh, eye wall replacement cycle but because of uh, uh, cold of its cold wake beneath the system uh, lower sea surface temperature around 24 degrees celsius is uh, being the system on a weakening state as of this time and uh, upon the uh, forecast motion of north northwest or north within the next uh, 24 hours there is possibility that it may again re-intensify because it will move over slightly warmer sea surface temperature tropical cyclones tend to uh, develop if the uh, sea surface temperature is around 26 degrees or more that's why there's a uh, weakening of the system because it's over 24 degrees celsius temperature okay so here the philippines you can see here the uh, isolated thunderstorms uh, blossoming up as of this time and the uh, uh, lpa 91w here Let's take a look at the uh, tropical cyclone uh, uh, Asian agencies tracks on Mindole. So most of the Asian agencies from Joint Typhoon Warning Center, Korea, China, um, although Pagasa is not yet here. So uh, uh, most of them, except for Pagasa and this one, this is on the uh, track of the uh, Hong Kong Observatory. Um, it will not enter the Philippine Air Responsibility or it will be just along the line of the PAR, okay, of the Philippine Air Responsibility, so that's the PAR line. So only the Pagasa and uh, uh, Hong Kong Observ Observatory is uh, forecasting it to enter the Philippine Air Responsibility and it will just be inside the PAR uh, for 24 hours, then uh, likely on Wednesday it will exit the PAR Okay, so that will be uh, beginning tomorrow if it moves more to the west. But if it maintain its north-northwest or northerly track, maybe it won't enter par and the name Lani, okay, will not be used. But if it enters, it will be named locally as Lani. Okay, so that's the naming, naming convention uh, or the protocols of Pagasa once a uh, tropical cyclone enter the Philippine area responsibility. Right now, they're uh, releasing a 12 hourly tropical cyclone advisory since it's uh, over the advisory uh, territory of Bagasa, which I showed it to you last week. So, the uh, advisory area of Bagasa is somewhere here. Uh, pardon my crooked line. Okay, so there. So if there's a typhoon here, they issue 12 hourly updates. That's the new protocols of Pag-Asa. And uh, the winds uh, is variable in different uh, agencies. Uh, some are 185, some are 175. Okay. Uh, so far, that's the uh, latest from the Asian tracks. Here's the uh, global models. Uh, it looks like uh, similar to the tracks of the Asian agencies. European model enters PAR, American model outside of PAR, as well as the uh, Canadian model, while the uh, UK met and the European model as well as the US Navy model shows it entering the Philippine area of responsibility, as well as the Japan Meteorological Agency Typhoon models. Okay, and if you take a look at the uh, zoom in southern animation for from windy.com, here comes the storm at the back of my uh, video. If we move it there, so there you go. You can see how large the eye is beginning to form right now. And here's the uh, thunderstorms over Central Luzon, Bicol region, portions of Bicol region, and Visayas, Mimaropa. There are also some local convective or local uh, uh, thunderstorms over northern Mindanao as well. Okay. And if you take a look at the rainfall accumulation forecast until Wednesday, as you can see, the uh, 
thunderstorm activity and the rainfall uh, conditions across the Philippine Islands for the next three days is somewhat uh, not uh, above average. It's just uh, below normal. So there will be some isolated thunderstorms across the Visayas, Mimocopa, portions of Bicol region, southern Tagalog provinces, including Metro Manila. These areas of northern Luzon, there, can, there might be some localized thunderstorms as well. And also across northern Mindanao and portions of uh, other portions of Mindanao as well. So there you go, here's the uh, storm. That's the uh, rainfall that will be generated by the storm for the next three days. And if you take a look at the uh, uh, wind forecast uh, for the Philippine Islands, right now it's variable with some northeasterly winds over the uh, coastal waters of northern and northeastern zone. By uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, some southwesterly uh, light winds will be expected over Visayas. Variable winds across Bicol region and portions of Luzon, and as well as Mindanao. And on uh, Wednesday, some westerly winds will uh, penetrate the uh, areas of uh, southern and central Luzon, Bicol region, and also uh, Mimaropa, Visayas while variable winds across uh, the southern portions of northern Luzon, like Binget, Fugao, Quirino, Isabela, while northerly winds across uh, Batanes, Bubu, and Kububa Island, Islands, as well as the northern coastal areas of uh, Cagayan Valley. Okay, uh, so far that's the latest from our wind forecast from ECMWF, courtesy of windy.com. Let's take a look now at the latest Tropical cyclone threat potential from Pagasa issued uh, today, 2 a.m., early this morning. This is a forecast summary for the next two weeks for the Philippine Islands. If there will be more low pressure areas that will be uh, for, uh, that are being forecasted. So on week one, September 27 to October 3. Now this is now the track of uh, the current tropical cyclone uh, Mindole or Lani if it enters far. So we don't have any problem on that. Now on week 2, October 4 to October 10, there will be a series of back-to-back -back low pressure areas forming within the intertropical convergence zone, or we can call this a monsoon trough or surface trough. So there might be another back-to-back -back LPAs. Uh, one model shows it as a tropical storm. Uh, the other model shows nothing. So there's no need to worry yet as of this time. Uh, we are going to confirm that in the coming days if it will push through on Wednesday and Friday uh, possible formation of uh, uh, multiple series of low pressure areas. Remember we are now in October so most likely since the IDCZ is somewhere here the presence of back-to-back uh, -back LPAs is uh, very imminent during this time uh, of the, uh, the month particularly as we enter the month of October and November. Okay. So, uh, and also we are gearing towards uh, possible La Nina this fall. So, most likely, most of the formation will be west of the Philippines. Let's hope and pray. There will be no formation to the east of the Philippines that may uh, cause havoc to our areas. So, uh, the uh, biggest uh, way that we can do is to pray all the time. Okay? So, there you go. That's the latest from our uh, update for today, Monday. And we'll be returning again on Wednesday to give you more update on the weather. From Time for 2000, this is Mike Pado reporting. Stay safe always. Be hashtag with the wiser. And thank you so much for watching our channel.